So let's pull the players in, but before we do, let's take a quick look at the structure of this XML. So we've got game, team, and you notice we've got two teams. Uh, we're not going to care about the umpires. And within team, we've got player, player, player. So let's, let's kind of dock that. Again, we've got game, team, player. Let's document that in our code by saying pull in players. And specifically, we've got game, team, player. Again, that's our doc. And to accomplish that, first of all, we'll create a tree variable. And we'll say tree equals et. And you remember et, if we'll scroll up here, et was our element tree. So equals et dot parse. And once again, the XML file. So the XML file that we pulled in, we're going to parse into an element tree. And then we're going to say game equals tree.getRoot. So we know the root element is game. And we now have getRoot is going to return a tree as well. So we've got a tree that is the game element. And we say teams. equals game dot find all and in this case we just give, need to give it the name of the element we're looking for okay now one trick here again so we see that we're where we think we are as we go along if you declare a variable or if you just type the name of a variable and you don't assign it to anything then it'll just output it it'll print it out so let's go ahead and run this and you see that we got our, it, it ran the whole thing again. So it literally went to that file and pulled it again from mlb.com. It gave us the response, the success 200, told us that it saved it locally as a 19 KB. And then it told us the element team was correctly established, initiated, and it gives us the address. So while that doesn't really enumerate what's inside teams, it tells us that it was successful in loading up that variable. So I think we're good. Let's keep going. And now what I want to say is, so we know we got teams, and we want to say for teams, let's say for team, singular, in teams, plural. So for each team that we find in the teams element, we want to print team dot attribute dot get name. Okay, so again, if we jump back over to here, the team element has a name attribute that's Colorado Rockies. And once again, let's just see if we were see if we're where we think we are, and we are. So the team teams element tree has two teams inside. Each one has a name, and we printed them out. So we're still still rolling. And now let's create a players variable. And what we're saying is within team singular, we want to find all. And let's go see what it was named here. We want to find all the players. So within Team Singular, we've got player, player, player. Okay. I want to find all the players. And then for each player, singular, in players, plural, because again, that's also going to be, oops, oops, didn't put it in there. So the, the attribute that we're finding is player, and for each player singular in players plural, we're going to, let's just print it for now. Let's say print, and I'll put a couple spaces there so they indent. 
and let's say player dot attribute dot get. Uh, first thing I'm going to get is the ID. So again, each player has an ID, and that's what we're going to correlate the pitch FX data with. And then they've got a first and last name. Now they've got number, they've got box name, they've got you know what they bat, their average, all that good stuff. But again, we just want to relate the number back to their name. So for now, let's say let's we're getting the ID. And player dot attribute dot get first. Now we'll go ahead and copy that. And player dot attribute last. And let's park right here. Check that it matches our front parenthesis. It does. Let's run it. And there we go. So we're pulling in. We're correctly pulling in. We're reading the whole Rockies team. We're pulling in the name and number. And then we're reading the Dodgers team and pulling in their name and number. Now, all we've done here is print it. So in order to capture it and to use it later to relate these numbers back to the player IDs, to the player names, we're going to create a player dictionary. So there's a Python object called a dictionary, and it's just a keyed, basically it's a keyed list. So we know all we need is this, so let's not type it, let's cut and paste that, and I'm going to control drag it to right there. So that's our first element. So that's, that's the key element. So the dictionary key is the ID. And let's just go ahead and grab these. And the player, you know, what's in that position in the dictionary is first name, last name. And to separate them, let's put a space in here. So we're basically concatenating the first and last name with a space between. And we're storing it in the dictionary under the key that is their ID. Now, if we run this, there's no new output, so it's going to run the same. But in order to establish this player dictionary variable, let's do run it. And we get an error. Player dictionary is not defined. So let's do this. Let's come back up. That's correct. We didn't define it. So before we go into the loop, let's say player dictionary equals and just give it an empty dictionary. So that's an empty dictionary. So you've got lists, which are the square braces, and you've got dictionary, which are the curlies. And let's run again. That time it works. Once again, it prints the output. But what we're really interested in is did it really create a dictionary that we can now use? And we'll say, in order to test that, we'll say play, player dictionary sub. And let's go get one of the numbers from here. So we know that player ID one one five six two nine should be Troy Hawkins. So let's test it by accessing the player dictionary, and we're going to get player dictionary sub eleven fifty six twenty nine. And that should, when we run it, come out to LaTroy Hawkins. It does. So it looks like we're good. It looks like we have correctly created a player dictionary element or object, Python object, that lets us translate any ID into a name.